Hello, welcome to the channel. Uh, this is my first uh, video on the channel and I thought I would start by reviewing this, the Zebra Camping Set number two. Uh, I know it's pretty bad form to start with a sequel, however, I don't think you need to have seen Zebra Camping Set one to understand the whole concept of this. This uh, is a new one on me, to be honest, because uh, like many of you, if you're into uh, bushcrafting, uh, hiking, camping, or whether, like me, you just watch too many of these sort of reviews about uh, products on YouTube and then end up buying stuff, uh, you'll be more than aware of the Zebra brand uh, from Thailand that were established, as we can tell, on this very informative box in 1966. Um, great products. Uh, they're absolute mainstays of the bushcrafting scene. I, I think most... People will have seen videos of them uh, in the UK with like things like this, the little uh, bush pots, uh, billy can kind of things. This is the 10 centimeter version. Absolutely love this. Very solid piece of kit. Very well made. Very small as well, which uh, has been ideal for me on little solo uh, camping trips, and little bits of hiking and stuff like that when I wanted to cook a sort of, you know, not a large meal, but cook something a little bit more uh, substantial. It's had a little bit of use. I've not used this a great deal. Uh, the last uh, long range hike that I did, I ended up using a uh, Dutch army canteen cup instead over a little uh, like fire dragon stove. And that was absolutely ideal for my needs, just making, you know, small lunches and breakfast and occasional tea and coffee and stuff like that. But I thought uh, that I would buy uh, this because I, I, to be honest, like I didn't, know that zebra were making a camping set and from my you know few little looks and stuff online it seems to be that the only videos of it seem to be a couple from thailand and there is one video uh, of a chap in australia showing off uh, the new sort of product range uh, in his shop and he's showing uh, all of the the billy cans and the, the knives and forks and trays and saucepans all that sort of stuff and then sort of very brief little glance at this the the camping set but a lot of the zebra stuff that we use uh, in the uk bushcraft style and camping style is things like the uh, the little 14 centimeter lunchbox and the uh, the billy cans and things like that however originally they weren't really intended for that sort of use they were as you probably know if you've seen uh, these sort of videos before and things about zebra they were genuinely like lunchboxes uh, used to take into work rather than you know what we do as a uh, a rubbish bit of Tupperware with some cling film holding some monkey sandwiches together. They would actually use uh, things like this, probably the, the larger versions. Uh, and with these, they normally have the little tray. I've taken it out just to, to save a bit of weight and because I wasn't using it. You have a little uh, sort of a dish that slides into the top. And in there you can have uh, your sort of more liquid foods, your curries and so anything with a sauce, basically. It can go in there and then underneath your sort of your rices and vegetables and your, not drier foods, but the stuff that you wouldn't necessarily mix until the point when you're actually eating it. But obviously they're not, not really used that much for the, that sort of style of thing in the UK. We ended up getting them, uh, whacking them over fires and, and cooking uh, food in them as we went camping and hiking. But they are more than up for the job. Very good quality steel. And yeah, a little bit of weight to them, obviously. You, you know, if you wanted to save weight, you'd get a you know, a titanium pot or something like that. But for the, for the price that these are, I absolutely love them. And I kind of, I don't know, I think there's something uh, that I prefer about steel. It's like I absolutely love stainless steel uh, products. But this is the item that we're going to talk about because, like I said, I've not seen many reviews on this at all. And normally when I buy something online, I try to... I try to look at a few reviews and stuff because, you know, I'm a bit bad at trying to, uh, uh, well, I try to avoid like an impulse buy. Like you see something that you like, you immediately buy it, you get it, and then you realise you've made a huge mistake, you've wasted money, it's something that doesn't last, it falls apart, you kind of regret it, and then, you know, it's very wasteful. So usually I will try and find a review, but with this, there wasn't really any review, but that being said, with the zebra stuff that I've bought before, the 10 centimetre billy can and the uh, the 14 centimetre lunchbox, I thought, well, they're decent quality things. They've not let me down. I think that I'll take a risk on this. And plus, it was only uh, 19.99, basically 20 quid on eBay uh, with the postage included. So I thought, for, well, for 20 quid, I'm more than willing to take the risk. And so I don't want to obviously be showing you a box that's pretty boring. Uh, well, I'll show you what it indicates, uh, what is included uh, in the set. We have the camera set itself. 
Uh, includes a little camping bag, which is pretty cool. Like it says it's free, obviously that's included in it. Uh, we've got the little sauce pot, which is a 16 centimeter diameter with 1.7 liter capacity. The sauce pan with a 14 centimeter capacity uh, diameter with a 1.2 liter capacity. And then the frying pan lid uh, combination, which is 16 centimeter diameter with a 0.7 liter capacity. Now, without any further ado, we will push that as far back as it will go and we will get out the actual item itself all right here we go we'll see as you can see the little zebra bag drawstring net on one side as well so if it's wet or manky when you put it back obviously you try and dry it out uh, it'll uh yeah a little bit of air to it sort of air dry i don't know if i'll necessarily uh, be using the drawstring bag for it but you know that's a really nice little feature to have it and keep it all together here is the actual item itself. Now, as with all uh, the Zebra stuff, an absolute mirror polish. So you will be seeing a really weird, awkward, uh, sort of cone-headed version of me throughout this review. Because I don't think there's any way to film this without me having a very long head on it. But who knows? Maybe you're into that. But I don't really want you watching if you are. Here are the included parts of it. We have the frying pan. Butterfly handled. Really like it. Nice, nice sort of sturdy feel to this as well. Unlike a lot of these sort of camping sets, you tend to get it very thin walled, you know, rubbish. You do, you'll throw something in it, it immediately burns to the bottom. You'll spend the rest of your time sort of cleaning it off. But obviously it's steel, so you're going to have to try and be careful when you cook on it and not let stuff stick. But a bit of oil and a bit of, you know, previous experience cooking with it. Hopefully you'll get more and more used to it. I'm not, I'm not the greatest at cooking on steel and frying especially, but... Now really looking forward to taking this out and trying it out. We've got the second element now, which is the 14 centimeter saucepan. Once again, butterfly handled. It's a little, that one's a little bit wonky and that one's a little bit stiff, but to be honest, when they're together, they work together really well, nice and sturdy. It's not gonna sort of fold in on you, which is a good thing, so you're not gonna burn your thumbs or anything like that. And now the main element, the thing that keeps it all contained and nested within is the actual, uh, has it 16 centimetres? So yeah, 16 centimetre sauce pot itself, which is, yeah, once again, really cool uh, thing. The only thing that I noticed with it, there's two little niggling things that usually, well not usually, but with the other uh, parts of their range, the Zebra Billy cans and stuff, they, I'll get my little 10 centimetre one over as a reference. On these... As you will no doubt be aware, one of the little bushcrafting sort of uh, things that people enjoy is they have the little notch here uh, in the handle, which is brilliant if you have a hook or a, a rope or a bit of chain or anything like that, that it stops the hook running the whole line of the bale arm there and sort of prevents you know any unfortunate little tippings so you don't end up with the, the food and the water or whatever pouring over onto your fire, putting it out, ruining your day. However, on, I'll put that on back to one side. On this one, completely smooth bale arm, like a sort of just traditional bucket arm, uh, with no notch or no groove in there at all to hold anything. However, I reckon it should probably be all right as long as you're cautious when you put it on. It's kind of a nice sort of slight angle to it as well. It's not a slight curve, so it's not necessarily gonna slide off but as long as your your hook or if you've got like a carved wooden hook or anything like that it's going to kind of yeah it should be fine but obviously that's something that's a little bit different to the to the style of the billy cans now one thing that i did that kind of did worry me with it a little bit and the second i tried it and this happened i did get a little bit worried that maybe i would made a slight mistake if it is hanging over a fire we've got it there and we use this as the lid we want to conserve some fuel, keep maybe we're steaming something, anything like that. You put the lid back on, but there we go. See, a little bit of a drop that side, and I thought, well, that's, that's a little bit wonky. However, I then tried it on the other side, and it completely, yeah, it throws the weight of it completely out that way. So if you had that on, and even if, in case anyone said, you're going to put it there, it sort of throws it out a little bit. But, yeah, it's not... I tried it with some water in as well, just to see if it would 
would stay up if the, the, the extra weight was what was kind of missing. But yeah, it still tips. However, as long as you remember to put it on the way that I had it originally, it doesn't tend to tip. So that's quite handy. And the reason it doesn't tip once it's on that way is because I had it the right way to start with. So you will notice here, there's a very small notch in the little bail arm, the little axle for the bail arm. I don't think that's the correct word, but we we know what we mean. There's the little notch there. It stops the bail arm going any further. And on the other side, initially I thought, oh, maybe they've just welded this one the opposite way because the notch, the little groove that's kind of cut and then folded back is on the bottom. However, that serves a different purpose for stopping it dropping all the way down. So if this is on a fire or hot coals, something like that, I suppose it stops the handle falling into the fire. And I reckon the reason that you've only got one notch on both sides is it's, it's literally cutting a notch in the same piece of metal. And it's just a, a bit cheaper in terms of machining that they could just cut one side, flip one that way, flip one that way, rather than have you know a notch on either side. But then I suppose if a notch was on either side, I know you could have a notch on both sides and that would... That would keep the thing from from tipping completely. But what I might do, if that does seem to be a problem, when I actually manage to get out and field test it properly, rather than just be a, another guy sitting with it on a desk and not doing its actual fulfilling purpose, uh, when I take it out, if that does seem to be a problem and I'm boiling something and it does tend to want to tip or anything like that, uh, what I'll do is I'm thinking a little mod that you could do is even if it was just uh, a little bit of wire or some sort of, yeah, something like that, just a little bit of wire in there, twiddle it around with some pliers, you could form like a little locking sort of mechanism. I've got to kind of think it through a little bit. So that way the handle has not only the notch on that side, but something on this side that will keep the handle upright. And that's something I suppose if you were to wrap it loose enough, you could wrap it on, take it off, have your fire, whatever, and it's, yeah, it'll still nest together fine afterwards. And just give you that added sense of security that you're not going to be uh, cooking your lunch, pour all of the water over your fire, ruin your lunch, lose your lunch, and then end up having an absolutely terrible evening. But that said, I think this is, I don't know, one of my favourite impulse purchases that I've managed to, to buy in a while, and I really can't wait uh, to take this out and go camping with it because uh yeah i'm i think i'm becoming a little bit of a, a zebra stainless steel fanboy and uh i read the address for where their warehouse is uh, or their their factory is on the back of the box and there's part of me that really wants uh when we can travel again properly maybe to visit uh tyler and specifically just to go to the zebra warehouse because i think i'll end up coming back with about ten thousand steel things and having to book my own flight back home but yeah I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope uh, if you're after buying this, uh, or if you've not seen it before and this is your first view of it, I hope maybe that would uh, indicate you buying it. Because I think, you know, obviously without having used it over a fire and actually tested it out, I can't say for definite whether uh, I fully recommend it. But yeah, I, I think judging by previous several products and just by the feel of it as well, and it's not too heavy. I'll put the uh, the weight down uh, in the information down below because I actually forgot to weigh it. But um, I probably wouldn't take this if I was solo camping, but I would, um, I would if it was like a couple people, this would be a, a perfect size. Or I suppose if you're on your own and you wanna, you cook a relatively large meal because you could uh, do your bacon and eggs in that, um, cook some, boil some water in one of these and then, um, or do some, I don't know, veg or something in that one as well, and you could have a, a pretty hefty, or boil some potatoes in there as well, I'd have a pretty hefty, um, huge meal, really. Maybe, uh, who knows, if uh, if I manage to travel around before Christmas, I might cook my Christmas dinner in it. Anyway, uh, I don't want to waffle on too long, because, you know, the internet's a vast place, and we must go and look at videos of cats and all that other rubbish stuff. But you guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. Once again, here's my incredibly long, weird head. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>